Alright, thank you for attending my JuliaCon talk on Comrade, or High Performance Black Hole Imaging with the Event Horizon Telescope. So what is the Event Horizon Telescope? Well, the Event Horizon Telescope is a very long baseline interferometer. And what this means is that it's not a single telescope, but rather multiple radio telescopes spread across the Earth. The then teles these telescopes are then linked together and correlated in such a way that they don't actually measure the on-sky image, but rather the Fourier transform of the image. So what does this mean? Well, if we have a single pair of telescopes, we measure a single location in the Fourier domain and its complex conjugate. Then, as the Earth starts to rotate, we sample different locations in the Fourier domain in our different image structures. As more and more telescopes start to get added in, we fill different regions of the Fourier domain. So what makes the EHD imaging problem overall the VLBI imaging problem difficult? Well, it's the fact that there is no unique image that corresponds to the same Fourier transform. And this impacts us in a few ways. One is due to the finite size of the Earth. What this means is that we actually aren't able to sample very long Fourier components which correspond to very fine image structure. And so what we actually have is not this sharp image here on the right, but rather a blurred version of it. However, this is not the worst of it. Thanks to the EHT being as sparse as it is, namely we only have about eight telescopes or about six unique geographic locations, we have large gaps in our Fourier domain also. Or, namely, our Fourier coverage is sparse. So what this means is that we don't actually even see this image, but rather we see a corrupted version of it. And that this corruption is, a, is very non-linear and non-uniform. So how do we solve the image problem? Or how do we move from data to an image? Well, actually, it turns out that the easier approach is to look at the inverse question, namely, what image is consistent with the data? And a natural framework to do this with is Bayesian inference, namely where we try to characterize the distribution of potential images given a data term or the likelihood and a prior that encodes our prior knowledge of what should happen in these large coverage gaps that we have. However, this is a computationally difficult problem. And so most methods in the EHT instead just focus on finding the so-called best image which essentially turns the imaging problem into a simple optimization problem where a random initial guess is passed and then we optimize the log posterior density until we get the so-called best image. However, while characterizing the data with a single image is informative, it is imperative that we actually understand the entire family of images that are consistent with the data, especially with the sparse nature of the EHT. So what tools do we have to answer these questions? Well, here I'm going to focus on two, EHT imaging and FEMIS. EHT imaging is an easy to use Python code that has been used extensively in previous EHT publications. However, due to the performance characteristics of Python, methods here typically just look for the optimal or best image. On the other hand, we have FEMIS, which is a C++ code base dedicated to actually characterizing the full family or posterior of potential images. However, due to its nature, it requires more advanced users and an additional Python post-processing layer. In reality, this is just another example of the two-language problem in scientific computing. To try to see whether Julia can help with this problem, we developed Comrade, an EHT Bayesian modeling package that aims to characterize not a single image, but the entire family of images. And in fact, it has already been used within the EHT, being one of the main pipelines in the first analysis of Sagittarius A star, the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Additionally, Comrade was designed to have a generic model modeling interface to allow for efficient model exploration. Additionally, we have interfaces to a number of optimization and sampling packages. So what does imaging a black hole with Comrade look like? Well, it's actually only about 50 to 75 lines of code and is really just broken down into four parts. 
One, where we load the data. Two, where we create our visibility or image structure model. Three, where we create our probability model. So this includes the priors on our image structure, as well as our data likelihood. Finally, we either find the maximum posterior image or the best fit image, or we fully characterize the set of potential image structures using MCMC type methods. Next, we started to analyze the performance characteristics of Comrade relative to EHD imaging and Themis. Comparing Comrade with EHD imaging, we found in all, in all of our best benchmarks that Comrade was at least an order of magnitude faster than EHD imaging. This was to be expected solely due to the performance characteristics of Python. However, more interestingly and surprising to us was the fact that Comrade was actually almost a factor of two faster than Themis when evaluating the likelihood and was almost 20 times faster when evaluating the gradient of the likelihood. Now, this gradient was to be expected because Themis doesn't actually have a native auto differentiation library in it and relies on a slow finite differentiation scheme. What's even more impressive is that Comrade's about an order of magnitude less code than Themis and has a comparable feature set showing, that, showing the expressive nature of Julia. Moving on to actual imaging benchmarks, we found that Comrade is faster than Themis in all cases, namely for geometric modeling. While Comrade takes about 2 to 10 minutes on a laptop, Themis takes about a day on a cluster. Moving to more complicated models like Bayesian imaging, where we assume very little about the image structure, we find that Comrade takes about an hour on a laptop to find a posterior, while Themis takes up to five days on a cluster. So how did we actually achieve this performance of Julia? Well, it's not that C++ is inherently slower than Julia. It's not. What it is is that Julia had unique features that allowed us to rapidly develop the Comrade. One of these features is multiple dispatch, which allowed us to seamlessly integrate multiple packages together and have everything, quote, just work. However, just as important was the use of Julia's native package manager, package.jl. This greatly simplified us using multiple libraries, which had been a major headache for Themis in the past. This gave us access to a large number of optimization and sampling schemes and was the main reason why we were able to leverage auto-differentiation in Comrade versus finite differentiation in Themis, which is the major speed boost we have. And so what this really comes down to is that while Julia emits very fast code, it also emits very fast development in prototyping. All right, thank you.